Hello! I've got another super easy project for you today and I'm going to be showing you how to make this two drawer desk and this is for the study of my doll's house. Now the cutting list is in the description box below. So let's get started. So begin by cutting all of the pieces needed apart from those needed for the drawers and as always I advise not cutting those until after we've constructed the main unit and then we can measure the drawer openings and get a really accurate measurement. So we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the back and side pieces. So I've got here some glue which I've dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it and then I also like to have a spare cocktail stick handy for removing any excess glue from along the joins. So begin by applying glue to the back of the first moulding and I always like to check both sides of the mouldings after I've cut them and then I always have it so that the nicest side of the wood is facing upwards. So if you had any little sort of scuffs or dents in the wood or any little knots, you might want to glue those downwards. <laughs> Landed on my thumb, that was lucky. So attach that across the top of the side piece. And you want a nice flush edge along the top there. So what I'm going to do is bring in a pair, spare piece of strip wood. And then you can just press that along the top of the two pieces and press the moulding up against it and then you know you're getting that nice flush edge and the same at the bottom again just checking for the nicest side of the wood and that's a really good habit to get into as well so you've always got the nicest edges of the wood actually showing at the front of the piece of furniture Same thing with that, push it all up against the strip, just knock the bottom one out of place as well, let me get that back into alignment and then really carefully just remove any excess glue without sort of knocking any of the pieces out of place. And it's so much easier to remove the glue as you go along before it begins to dry. And then I've got here my clothes pegs and I'm going to use those to secure the pieces. Let's see if I can get a couple on each end. And you can use your mini clamps if you have those. I just find clothes pegs work well for these little moulding pieces. That can then be put to one side to dry and you can do the same with the back and the remaining side. So whilst those pieces are drying we can prepare the leg pieces. Now if you're just using a piece of strip wood then you can just cut that to the length given in the cutting list. But if, like me, you're going to be using some sort of spindle, then chances are you'll need to trim it to size because they're going to be a little bit too long for legs. And we want to trim them to 57.5 millimetres, and that is 2 and 17 64ths of an inch. So make the pencil mark working from the bottom of the leg, because obviously you want to trim off the straight section there. and do that on each of the legs and always measure from the rule never from the leg that you've just marked up and that way you get a more accurate measurement. And as you can see there's just a little bit coming off there but if you were just to use the spindle as it is the legs are going to look a little bit out of scale and your seat area would also be a little bit too high. And then I like to cut these using my mitre block and saw rather than a guillotine because I find when you use the guillotine it can tend to sort of split or crack the wood at the top. So it's best to use your mitre block and saw. And mine's designed to sort of 
um, hook over the side of my desk so so that I can do it on camera. I'm just going to put that eraser under there and do it that way. So put the leg in. And you want it so that the blade of your um, saw is just above that pencil line so that you're not cutting too much off. I'm probably completely blocking that, aren't I? Probably in the wrong position there. I've just got it so the blade is just above the pencil line or so that I can just see the pencil line at the edge of the blade there. Again just cut nice and slowly. And then if you end up with any of those little fluffy bits around the top as I have, rather than sanding that just use your craft knife and you can just trim those away. So just go on each side like that and just trim off any little sort of fluffy ends. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't on the camera there. So I'm just working my way around each edge like that and trimming off the fluffy ends. And by doing it that way, you're not going to be taken away from the length. If you were to then sand that, you would take away from the actual length of the leg. So do that with each of the four legs. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the closed pegs and then we're going to glue the side pieces between each pair of legs. So apply glue along each edge of each side piece. And then attach it to the first leg, making sure that you've got a nice flush line along the top there. Press both pieces flat against the work surface press them together at the same time and then bring in the remaining leg and again attach it so you've got that nice flush edge along the top there and again you can check that by bringing in that piece of spare strip wood get it back out of my drawer and push all three pieces up against it I'm just going to give that right hand leg a good firm press because it keeps wanting to come apart. So press all the pieces up against the strip and then you'll know you've got that straight edge up there. And we need that because we need a nice flat surface to attach the top piece to. Give that a good press like that. And then instead of trying to pick that up, just very sort of carefully slide it along your work surface so that it's not sticking to your work surface. I've just got a little bit of excess glue there as well. And when you're removing the glue, just make sure you don't sort of knock the leg out of place. Like that, so that can sit there for a moment and then you can do the same with your remaining set of legs. So we now want to mark up the back piece, that's the moulded back piece, the top and bottom pieces for placement of the draw divide. And to do that, we're just going to draw a line down the centre of each piece. So start with the back piece and just do a little pencil mark in the centre at the top and bottom of the piece. Same at the bottom there and then turn and join that up like that and then the same again on these pieces turn again and join and then with these pieces just continue the line onto the front and back edge of the piece and that will help when we're placing that central draw divide same with the other piece. And we're now ready to begin construction. And we're going to begin by attaching the moulded back piece to the 
back leg of the side piece. So turn the side piece face down like that and the back piece will sit towards the front edge of that back leg, really just along the join between the back leg and the side piece. So apply glue to the edge of the back piece. Glue that into place, making sure you've got a flush line at the top there so that it's sitting just along that join. If I just turn that, I'll show you how that looks from the top there. So it's sitting towards the front edge of the back leg. So we've got that little overhang at the back, the same as we have at the side there. So remove that little bit of excess glue, if you have any. And don't forget to do that around the back as well. Being really careful not to knock the piece out of place. We're now going to take the top piece, so that's one of the pieces that we've marked up. And this is going to sit on the inside edge of the joined pieces. Again, flush with the top of the two pieces. So apply glue to a short and a long edge. So if you line that up with the top of the side piece first, making sure that the front edge is sitting along the front edge of the leg. Let me turn around that way so you can see better what I'm doing. So we've got a nice flush edge along here. And then you can bring that back piece in to meet it and that will square the piece off. And again, make sure you've got a nice flush edge along that top as well and that that corner isn't dropping down. Give it a good firm press. And again, get inside and remove any excess glue. I'm just going to pop that up a little tiny bit so it's right at the top of that leg. And you've got time to manoeuvre things before the glue really begins to take. You can then turn that piece and lay it flat on your surface. Make sure all the pieces are flat against your surface as well. Now bring in your draw divide and this is going to sit centrally over that central pencil line. So we're going to use the little line that we did on the front of the top piece and it will sit centrally over that little line on the back piece as well. <laughs> and again I always like to choose the nicest edge to be facing forwards so have a little look at both sides first to make sure you've got the nicest edge facing forwards. And then you can apply glue to a long and a short edge. Position it so the little line at the back is in the very sort of center of the piece of wood and the same with the little line at the front there. Push it into place so it's going right into that back corner. Have a look from the front, make sure you're happy with that. And we can then attach the bottom piece and this will sit again on the inside edges of those joined pieces and on top of the draw divide. So you want to begin by applying a little bit of glue to the top of the divide. Like we want the pencil line to be facing downward so we can use that to line up the divide. So apply glue to a long and a short edge. And then pop that into place. making sure you've got nice flush edges along the back here and the side. So making sure it isn't sort of tipping one way or the other. 
press it against the side which will help to keep it where it should be and along the back as well press it along that divide as well and then you can have a look from the front and make sure that the divide is sitting centrally over that pencil mark and I think I might just need to push mine over a tiny bit like that to get it into place and then you can squeeze the top and bottom pieces against it just very carefully just to make sure that it's sitting where it should be and we can lay it back down again and give everything a good press the side had started pulling away then so I'm going to press and hold for a moment but when we've got that remaining side on we can put some tape around just to really secure all the pieces together okay so pop that piece onto the side and I'll just move the camera up a bit and then we can apply glue to that remaining side or to the edges rather bring in the remaining set of legs line it up so again you've got that nice flush line along the top there and that you've got a straight edge along here where the leg meets the front again you've got time to jiggle I'm just sort of using my nail there to make sure I haven't got anything overhanging and then just come round and have a look that you've got a nice flush edge along the bottom of the side piece as well and you may need to just pull that bottom piece down a bit as I'm having to get it into position and then you can press the pieces together again I also just want to go back a little bit at the bottom there again just have a quick sort of jiggle around make sure everything's where it should be have a look from the front make sure everything looks right and then I'm just going to grab a bit of masking tape I'm going to put a piece over this side pull it nice and tightly but without knocking those bottom and top pieces out you want to keep that flush line along the top and bottom press that down and then I'm going to turn it over and put a piece that side as well Pull it nice and tightly, but without pushing anything out of place. And then I think what I'll do as well is put a piece right over the front. Just to really pull the whole piece together. Attach it there like that. Push it together and then pull that side over. Like that. And then we know that will dry nice and square. So that can be left to dry and whilst that's drying we can prepare the top piece. So to prepare the top piece we're going to bevel one long edge and both short edges. So hold the piece against your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and sweep it towards you keeping it at that angle. So that's just starting to bevel but you want to keep going until you've got a nice sharp bevel like that and then you can do the same at each side and then you can tidy that piece up in your hand using a piece of 500 grade just sweep it along the edges like that So we're going to attach the top now and we're going to do it so it sits flush with the back of the legs so not with the back of the actual unit but with the back of the legs and then there will be an even overhang at either side and the overhang is usually the sort of width of those bevels that we've made so begin by applying glue to the top of the desk lift that up there <laughs> Make sure you get that right along the edges and onto those legs as well. Like that. So the straight edge of the top piece will be along the back. 
You can just check with your fingers that you've got that nice flush edge along the back of the legs. And then pick it up and slide it along so that the beveled part is overhanging. And if you look into the corner, the sort of edge of the leg will then run on to that lovely corner bevel piece there. And that's another way you can tell that you've got it in the right place. Check around the back and make sure you've got that nice flush edge. And then you can give it a press down. It's going to come forward on that side just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to secure this using masking tape and clamps. So let me grab my masking tape. I've got my clamps there as well. So I'm going to put a couple of pieces of masking tape straight over the top. And the other pieces of furniture in the study, I've done the top or left the top natural and just painted the base of the piece. But for this, I just wanted to make a bit of a contrast. So I'm going to sort of paint the whole piece. But if you did want to leave the top natural or do the top in a different colour, then obviously you would not attach it at this stage. until both pieces are painted. So I'm now going to use a few clamps along the front there and tuck them inside the drawers. And it's really important to do because if you can see there, already the top is trying to lift away from the actual top of the desk. And if you don't clamp it, then you'll always have that gap in along there. And I always say, but sort of try and get in as many as you can. I'll we'll definitely be able to get two in each drawer opening, possibly three. Okay, so that piece can now be left to dry. And then we can cut the pieces for the drawers. So you can now cut the pieces for the drawers. And as always, I've given the sizes in the cutting list, but they're intended to be used as a guide. And then once the piece is constructed, you can measure each drawer opening and adjust the sizes accordingly, using about half a millimetre as an allowance so that the drawer opens and closes smoothly. And then to construct the drawer, begin by attaching the sides to the outer edges of the base. So apply glue along each edge of the base. back down and attach the sides, making sure you've got nice flush lines along the front and back. Then I'm just going to bring in my spare pieces of strip wood. And what you can do is then lay those along each side. And that way you know you're getting even pressure all the way along there. sort of shove that along a little bit so it's not sticking to your work surface and then you can do the same with the remaining drawer. Your first drawer should now be dry enough so you can handle it without it falling apart. So apply glue along the front and back edges. the front and back pieces. Make sure again you've got flush lines along the side so you might just need to pull the side pieces out to meet the edges of the front and back pieces and that will square the piece off. Pull that one out a little bit as well and then just really carefully press it all together. Bring your strip back in to help you with that. Again, just sort of push that along your work surface and that can be left to dry and you can complete the remaining drawer. Once the drawers have dried, you might just need to do a little bit of sanding to get them to slide easily into place. 
but just sand a little bit at a time and then try again and then sand more if you need to otherwise you might end up taking too much off and once you've got a nice fit you can attach the draw knobs so I'm going to be using these little 2.5 millimeter 332nd of an inch little wooden knobs but if you're going to be using a sort of brass handle or a bead or something then you won't want to attach those until after we've painted the piece but if you're using a wooden knob then just make a little pencil mark in the center of your draw front and drill a hole using a bit that's as big as the little stem on the back of the draw knob there And then drill down, don't put too much pressure on because you don't want to crack the front of your drawer. And then I always just like to twist the drill bit around before I take it out, just to make the hole slightly larger so that the um, drawer knob will go in nice and easily. And then just try that. And if you find you need to make a slightly larger hole, you can just do that using a cocktail stick so I poke the stick in, twist it around a little bit and then you can try again and that's a nice fit this time so even though it is nice and tight I always like to apply a little bit of glue so just dot a little bit into the hole the draw knob push it all the way in and then make sure that it's actually sitting flat against the draw front like that and do the same with the remaining draw and these pieces are now ready for paint so I gave the desk two coats of paint and I sanded gently after each coat had dried. So there is the completed desk. Now in a coming episode I'll be dressing the desk and we'll have a lovely notice board above it and lots of lovely bits on top and I'll also be making a fabric chair to go with it. So look out for those tutorials. But I really hope you've enjoyed this one. And if you have a go at making this piece, please share your photos in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. And if you're not already a member, I'll put a link to my Facebook page below where you can request to join. OK, so now let's go and put this piece into place in the doll's house study. I think that looks really nice there. And we're going to be adding some colour to that little corner with that notice board that I spoke of and the fabric chair and we'll coordinate with all the other lovely blue fabrics in the room. But that's it for today, so thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.